All right, so we're outside of a 2018 Honda Pilot EXL with Honda Sensing. And I just wanted to start you at the back, and I'll walk you up front, but I just want to give you a quick rundown of how the things in the back work. So it's powered tailgate, so you notice the button's right here, uh, and you just press it to, to release it and bring it down. Uh, in the back, I'm going to start you down here. Uh, you do have hidden storage underneath here, so you can see that. And it is double-sided, so I can use the plastic side or the carpeted side, or I can drop it down uh, if I want. And now I have storage uh, that has a lip, and I can fit uh, some different things in here. I have one of the seats folded down so you can see how it lays out, uh, and the tabs are right here to throw them down. So it's as simple as just pulling them and throwing them. Now, moving around to the second row. Second row, it's a simple pull push tab right here to throw the seat back, so real easy to use. Uh, and one thing I will show you is the second row is adjustable. So you've got a bar down here I can slide. So I could have one all the way up. You can see the other one's back. So depending on how tall the person is, who's in that third row, I can create or remove space. So that's what's going on right there. Uh, and I have that same button to uh, throw the seats forward right here. So I can do it from the back row or this second row. Uh, back here, you'll notice I do have AC controls. Uh, so they're right down there. And I do have AC vents here, along with AC vents in the back. You can see one right there and there's one on the other side. So let's move into the front portion of the vehicle. So I'll start you right here. Uh, it is a 10-way powered seat and a four-way powered seat over on the driver's side. So your uh, back controls as far as lower lumbar support, the back adjustment, and then the height of the seat and everything. So stepping into the cabin. All right, let's get to the stuff that most people ask about. So up, down power windows, I've got them tinted right here, but you do have auto up and down so you can touch them. Uh, my, my lock controls as far as the windows and the door locks. My mirror controls are right here, left and right. Uh, if you have it pressed to the left or right, keep in mind it'll actually, I believe, throw your mirror down for you. So when I throw in reverse, let's put it on the left side and double check this, uh, it'll actually lower the mirror, uh, maybe in your touring model. So keep that in mind, it is an option that's offered uh, in a higher trim level. Uh, but this is how you control left and right, your pad right here. Econ button improves gas mileage of the car. Uh, when you turn it on, you'll see a green leaf come on up there. So that's what's flashing on and off right now. Uh, improves gas mileage by shutting down electrical systems, affecting things like uh, your accelerator and the AC unit. So keep that in mind. Uh, moving down below those, you're gonna notice right there with the, the uh, LED light, that is your road departure mitigation system. If you start to veer off the side of the road, uh, the wheel will start to vibrate and it will beep at you to let you know, hey, wake up in case you were drifting off the side of the road. Uh, moving up and over a little bit, you'll see a car with squiggly lines. That's vehicle stability assist. That works with your traction control. This is always on uh, unless you want to turn it off. The uh, only time you'd want to turn this off is if you were uh, stuck in the mud. What it does is it transfers power amongst the wheels to whichever one has better traction to correct a skid. So that's how this works. Now below that, you're going to see this button right here. This is for your forward collision uh, braking system. Uh, what that's set up to do, it's always on also unless you press it and you have to press both these for a couple seconds to turn them off to, to give you an idea. Now it's turned off. You hear the beep uh, and then it alerts you up in the dash so that you can see there's an orange uh, emblem right there. So that's what it is. So I'm going to turn this back on real quick. All right, so it's back on. So it uses radar down in the grill to detect a car in front of you. First, it'll alert you if you're going to hit them. And then if it's looking like you're still going to hit them, it'll actually break the car for you. So that's how that system works. So moving up onto the steering wheel. So the first thing I'm gonna show you right here is this button right here. When you press this, it's gonna to toggle through these two different screens you have over here, so your Bluetooth and your audio. So it's just a quick jump between the two. The plus and minus right here are your volume controls. Left and white will be switching tracks or jumping between favorite stations if you have your audio turned on. So that's just how that works. So I'm gonna turn the audio on here uh, just to, in case I need to present you to anything else. Uh, your menu button right here is actually going to toggle between some screens. So if I press this button, it's going to pull up this screen over here, which will allow you to scan, uh, view channels, different things like that. So that's just what it is. Uh, and depending on what screen you have pulled up, that's what this menu button is for, right? Source button, pull up whether it be Sirius XM, FM, AM, anything you have connected up to the car, and you can see it toggling over on the screen also. So that's just what this button does. Uh, moving down, my Bluetooth control. So to answer a phone call, to hang up or go back, and then to use voice command. This also works with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So if I'm plugged in, uh, it gives me access to Siri um, and it gives me access to OK Google. So that way I can ask Siri, Siri, you know, give me directions such and such. It pulls up on the screen and starts doing it. Uh, so it gives you that option of navigation through the phone. Uh, and I'll go over that a little bit more here in a second. Now down here on the bottom right, there are these up and down arrows and that toggles between your screens up here. So oil life, tire pressure, you know, just a compass, uh, trip info, things like that. Uh, so that's where you get to this. And if you need to reset your trips, that's what this button right here in the middle is for. Uh, now moving up, you're gonna see some Honda sensing stuff and that's gonna be right here. Now this first one is lane keep assist. Now you always wanna make sure this main button is on to use these and if it is, you'll see a LKS and ACC on. So I'm flashing it right there and this will stay on. So if you turn it on once, it'll remain on the next time you get in the car. 
So to set your cruise control, I'd get up to speed, I'd press the set button. From there, I can determine how much space it keeps with this button. When I press this, you're gonna see some boxes appear. The more boxes, the more space it's gonna keep between you and the car in front of you. So the most boxes, I'm going 65, the guy in front of me slows down to 55. My car slows down, keeps that designated amount of space, and I can create less space by pressing the button repeatedly. Uh, so that one's just a, a preference. You have to find out what you're comfortable with. Now, if, if I've set my speed and then I want to increase it or decrease it, I have the minus and the plus right here to do so. And then to, just to cancel to get out of the whole thing, right? So that's pretty self-explanatory. Lane keep assist. Now, when I press this button, you're going to see these dotted lines come on. So you can see them flashing at us right there. Now, that is going to start using a camera that is actually up in this box right here to read the, the lines on the road. It works from 45 miles an hour to 90 miles an hour. Uh, it doesn't work when your windshield wipers are on, so keep that in mind. If it's raining out and you got them on, you need to really focus and pay attention. That's the idea behind it. Uh, but when you're using it, what it does is it detects the lines in the road and just keeps you centered. So it's, it's there to prevent you from drifting out of your lane. So this isn't self-driving technology. Keep that in mind. It's not going to drive the car perfectly, but what it's designed to do is just help. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's, it's, it's a safety feature, but it's not a, you know, a crutch. Um, so that's how this, this feature works. So that's kind of the rundown of the steering wheel. Now over here, you're gonna notice my lights. I can switch them over to auto by having the hashtag marked up and my fog lights, whether I want them off, whether I want them on, right there my hash is marked up. Then you're gonna see this button over here. So I can do one of two things to use this. This is the camera off the right side, the blind spot camera. I can press it to turn it on and when I do, I get this view over here and it's paced right off the bottom of my mirror over there so you can see it barely hanging underneath. So what it's pulling up is the right side of my car. So the red line is the end of my car. Red to orange is a car length, and then orange to orange is a secondary car length. And I can turn these hash marks on and off, so just keep that in mind. I don't have to, to uh, turn the right blinker on, because that's how it's designated right now. The default is when I hit the right blinker on, this turns on. That button I just showed you, you can turn it on and off whenever you want. So that way, if you heard a motorcycle going down the road and you're like, man, where'd that guy go? Click on the button, bam, here I go. I got my camera on. And then to turn it back off, I just press the button and it turns off. Uh, moving over to the other stalk is going to be my windshield wiper control. So my front is going to be by pulling it down and up, and then my back controls are just on the tip of the blinker stalk. And it is intermittent, so I can affect speeds right here. Now moving over, you can see that it is a uh, push button start, uh, and it does come with a remote start. To use remote start, I always want to press the lock button first, and then press the remote start button and hold it for a couple seconds. This will fire the car up, and it can essentially run for 20 minutes. Uh, and what's cool about it is it'll turn the car on, and it'll turn either AC or heat on and get it down to, I believe, like 72, 74 range uh, to make sure that the car is either hot or cold, depending on the outside temp. Uh, so that's how this works. Uh, if you start it up and realize you didn't want to keep it running, press the unlock button and press the remote start button. It'll turn the car off. Uh, so that's how that works. Uh, once you get in the car, it's still going to ask you to put your foot on the brake and tap that start button to turn the rest of the electronics on. And that's just a safety feature to make sure that this is now in the car. Uh, now, remember, these are set up to where the plastic piece is what has to be in the car. There is a physical key in here. I don't think I can get it out with one hand, but you pull this switch and you slide off this metal piece. So I can give this to the valet guy and take my keys and everything on the key ring with me. So that's how that works. Now, moving over to the touchscreen. I'm going to start you off from the home button here. Uh, so general setup, just like a like like a phone's home screen. I've got my phone as far as connecting up to Bluetooth. Once I've done that, I can get to my contacts, my speed dials, uh, general info like that. If you need to add a phone, how to do so, go over to settings. I'm going to touch that. And then from there, I'm going to go to Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi. So I'm going to select that. Uh, and then I want to go to the device list right there. And then from here at the bottom of the screen, it says add Bluetooth device. So go ahead and select that. And then it's going to say, hey, turn your Bluetooth on on your phone. And then set it to discoverable, depending on what kind of phone it is and then hit OK, and now it will search for your phone. So that's how you connect up to Bluetooth. Now the next button is my information button. This is gonna give you options to get to like your tripometer information or if you want a clock and screensaver. So trip info, it's the same info that I can get over here. Uh, and I'll pull it up right there, and I just use that button to get there. So that's the same info, it just depends on where you want it if you're taking a long trip. Now if I wanted to get back to like a screensaver, uh, just like a wallpaper, I should say, not a screensaver, I could load a picture through the USB down there. Uh, and put a picture up of my dogs, my favorite team, you know, my grandkids, whatever it may be that makes you happy in life. Or if you just want a simple display like this because you don't want a lot going on. Some people prefer that. Um, moving over. So audio wise, I'm gonna show you all the options on the cars. Touch source right up here in the top corner. Uh, this is gonna pull up all my options. So I've got FM, I've got AM, 90 days of satellite radio. I do have USBs I can plug a USB drive into and pull music up on. Uh, just remember you wanna keep that um, set up to a FAT32 as far as your USB. So as far as formatting goes, it's gonna work better. Um, you, you plug anything with an eye pretty much into this and it'll run. Uh, it does have Pandora compatibility, uh, Bluetooth, your aux in. Um, remember you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto so you can get some of these options via another uh, way. So I'm gonna go back out of this. 
Honda Link is just set up to where I can connect to my phone to the car and it'll give me things like maintenance reminders, recall notices, and stuff like that. Smartphone connection. So this is what I was describing earlier. If I plug into this USB down here with the phone on it, so you can see the one with the phone emblem, uh, it allows me to pull up my, my phone's navigation. Uh, if you're using an Android-based phone, you have access to Google Maps or uh, Waze. If you're using an iPhone right now, you only have access to Apple Maps, so keep that in mind. But it does give you access to a lot of other apps too. So there's things like you know iHeartRadio, um, you know Spotify, Pandora, just different options along with your contacts and, and everything like that. So a lot of people like it because it's super familiar and easy to understand. If you have questions about it, I mean, I've shot a couple videos on that and there's plenty of them out there. Uh, so you can check out how uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto works. My settings in the car right here, you saw how I went to Bluetooth to get to uh, hook up a phone some other stuff that I just want to quickly show you is under vehicle so this is where you can get to things like your door locks um, right now the default setup to where in uh, lock mode it's gonna automatically at 10 miles an hour lock the doors you can change that here uh, getting out of the car it's set up to where when I open my driver's side door it's gonna unlock all the doors in the car and I can change those settings right here too so these are just common stuff that people like to play with sometimes uh, or as far as uh, what's most commonly adjusted um, as far as other things that are in here Let's see, yeah, key unlock remote. That just means that I can pop the key uh, and it'll pop open the driver's side door or I can hit it to where it opens all the doors just to make life easier if, you, if your family's always running up and grabbing on doors and pulling them. Uh, so that's what's here. I'm gonna back out of that uh, and go to keyless access setup. Uh, and this is where you can find the walkway auto lock. I really like this feature. And what it is, is if I get outside of 10 feet from my car, it can automatically lock the doors for me. Uh, and in, in doing so, I would just hit enable to do that. So that's what this feature is. It's cool because the, the keys in this car, they won't, they won't lock inside the car, so you don't have to worry about locking the keys in the car. But if you're like me and you get in the grocery store and realize, dang, I don't know if I locked my doors, you can set up to do this for you. So that's how the touchscreen works from here. Uh, pretty simple and easy setup. Moving down your AC controls is tri-zone, so left, right, and back. And I can lock the back, so I can complete control over that from right here. Uh, so I can control all of them separately or all together if they're synced. So if I sync them, all three move. If I unsync them, I'm just controlling my side and the other sides are left alone. So that's how that works. Heated seats, the controls are right here. You saw down here I have a power outlet and then I have two USBs in there. Um, over here, just my standard shifter, uh, and then I've got a snow traction control. It just affects shifting points in the car, so it allows the car to get a little bit better traction if you're in snow. That's what it is. Moving down into my center console, it's actually pretty large. I've got a good amount of storage space in there. Uh, and then I do have another power outlet and a USB there, additionally. Uh, I'm sitting outside of a, or inside of a white model with a tan interior, so our ivory, as, as Honda would call it, but I call it tan just because I think more people uh, understand that. Uh, you'll notice that all the uh, door seals on the top of the dash are always going to be black, and that's just to prevent glare. So in, in, in these models, you're always going to notice that, depending on what color it is, whether it be a gray interior or a tan interior, or if it's black on black in the inside, as far as the black tops and the black bottoms. Uh, other than that, you know, I've got home link in this car. I've got a sunroof in it that I can pop open and crack if I want. And then I've got a sunglass holder right here with a mirror so you can keep an eye on the uh, the kids in the back, the dog, or if there's a weird salesman like me in the back. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. Uh, comment on the YouTube video if you want. You can always reach out to me via phone, 512-443-4300, NASA for Justin, or email me at the letter J and then Fuller, so J-F-U-L-L-E-R at howdyhonda.com. Uh, hopefully you'll subscribe to my channel and you like it. Thank you much.